What are some dark, disturbing facts about the human brain? Story 1. The two parts of the brain begin to operate independently of one another when the corpus callosum, which facilitates communication between them, is injured or sliced. Split brain sufferers are those who suffer from this illness. An intriguing passage about people with split brains from Michio Kaku's book, The Future of the Mind. During my conversation with a renowned expert on split brain patients, Dr. Michael Gazaniga of the University of California, Santa Barbara, I inquired about the feasibility of conducting studies to verify this idea. It is possible to speak with either hemisphere independently of the other in a number of ways. To easily direct inquiries to each hemisphere, one can, for instance, have the participant wear special glasses on which questions can be shown to each eye independently. Trying to get a response from either hemisphere is the difficult part. It is challenging to extract information from the right brain because it is incapable of speaking. The speech centers are only found in the left brain. Dr. Gazaniga told me that he designed an experiment in which the right brain, which was mute, could talk using Scrabble letters in order to learn more about what the right brain was thinking. He started by posing a question to the patient's left brain about his post-graduation plans. In response, the patient stated that he desired to work as a draftsman. However, when the same topic was posed to the silent right brain, things started to get interesting. The words automobile racer were spelled out by the right brain. The right brain was planning for the future with a totally different agenda than the dominant left brain was aware of. There was really a mind of its own in the right brain. Story 2. What freaks me out is how little control we have over it. Even with voluntary movements, we're really only able to easily execute actions, grabbing things for example, because our cerebellum unconsciously fine-tunes the whole motion. I once had a professor describe consciousness as this tiny self-aware portion of the frontal lobe sitting on top of an inordinately complex machine. And for everything the machine does, it says, Hey, I did that. Although he was exaggerating a bit, it definitely messes with my head. Yeah, like when you're trying for a minute to remember something and you give up. Then it pops into your consciousness a few hours later. There's actually a kind of experiment theory out there that one of my professors showed us, and it basically stated that we have no free will. This is because when we decide to do something, before we even make that decision, our brain has already fired, sent the signal, and then our consciousness follows a split second later with, I'll do that. So the brain has already made the decision for us before we're even consciously aware of it. The only problem with it is that it treats the brain and the mind as two separate things. Story 3. Your brain cells are predators. As they say, your brain uses over 25% of your body's energy, even though it only makes up 2% of your weight. Our brain's tens of billions of neurons need energy input all the time. If you leave them without any energy, they will begin to consume themselves and cause havoc in your brain. Your neurons start to consume pieces of themselves in order to get energy when they sense your rumbling stomach. The process of communication is pushing you to consume in a really cannibalistic way. Story 4. If you ignore incomplete thoughts, your brain will trap you in an unending cycle. Every one of us has occasionally experienced having a catchy song or melody lodged in our heads for several days. This phenomenon is known by scientists as earworm. It is said that essentially, the brain detests incomplete ideas and is always driven to act upon them. Thus, if you've observed the earworms that seem to stick in your head, it's mostly because of the same phrase or stanza being repeated. If you didn't give the brain an opportunity to finish the music, it wouldn't know how to play the entire song. This also brings up the idea of semantic satiation, which states that your brain eventually loses the value and meaning of a word or song if you expose it to too much of it. The brain uses this signal to tell you to move on and avoid being overly fixated on anything. It is recognized as a completed thought. However, both earworms and semantic satiation are typically transient phenomena. Story 5 
Your brain can't tell the difference between what you observe with your eyes and what you can imagine in your head. This is such an interesting point with so many implications. There's the mental health illness piece of it, which is why I find hallucinations an absolutely terrifying concept. Then, if you think about animals like birds or mantis shrimp, which have entirely different cone receptors in their eyes and can see wavelengths that we can't, there is so much information out there we are physically incapable of processing because we don't have the proper ability to do so. I'm a pretty big skeptic when it comes to supernatural things, and I think there's got to be some scientific explanation for a lot of it. I think how we can physically process sensory input plays a huge role in it. Ghost sightings, seeing or hearing things that aren't there, all of that. Is it just some residual instinct from when we were much more vulnerable as a species? Is there a mental health aspect to it? Or is there some minor mutation in some people that are picking up on something, not necessarily an actual ghost, but some kind of input that we attribute to the supernatural? Most of us can't sense. Story 6. Your perception of reality is not what it is. Yes, that is accurate. Contrary to common belief, what people perceive is a mental and visual translation rather than a direct representation of the outside world. All we actually see is an imprecise, observable image created by our own brains. This is a physiological truth, not some philosophical argument. Here's even more. Because of the differences in how our brains portray the outside environment, we perceive reality differently and with mischief. This is because differences in nerve systems cause people to see colors differently, whether that difference is modest or significant. Variations in the absorption range and maximum peaks of wavelengths that cone cells respond to among individuals may be one cause of this. Story 7. Suddenly, as you're enjoying your dinner, you freeze. Half a million individuals suffered from a terrifying illness known as encephalitis lethargica, popularly referred to as the sleeping sickness, between 1917 and 1928. After initially emerging in Europe, this swiftly expanded to North America and India. Unfortunately, roughly one-third of those affected passed away. The victims, who were still very much alive and cognizant, discovered that they were trapped in a state of frozen thought and body. Those who had this illness either froze or fell asleep while working or eating. It was accompanied by peculiar and strange behaviors, such as restricted eye and speech movements, complete stillness for extended periods of time, an incapacity to laugh, and a lack of facial expressions. Story 8. The situation was surprising in that among the survivors, some showed signs of Parkinson's disease, a brain disorder that causes shaking and impairs walking, balance, and coordination. L-DOPA, an amino acid used in Parkinson's disease treatment, was well received by a group of patients who made it through. Although the exact etiology of encephalitis lethargica is still unknown, one idea suggests that the immune system attacked the brain due to a mutant bacteria that caused inflammation in the brain, which was first caused by sore throats. Conditions such as these, for which there is no known cure or treatment, disturb me. The brain is a maze of mystery, as we now know. We still don't know a great deal of things. Story 9. The Phineas Gage Case One historical incident that illuminates the sinister and unsettling facets of the human psyche, the frontal lobe, which governs personality, behavior, and decision-making, suffered a catastrophic injury to railroad construction worker Phineas in 1848, yet he managed to recover. Phineas was stabbed by an iron rod that penetrated his skull and caused damage to his frontal lobe, yet he remained awake and managed to escape the accident. But Phineas's personality and behavior drastically changed as a result of the accident. He changed from being a well-liked, diligent person to an impetuous, careless person who couldn't hold down a job or keep relationships together. This instance serves as a sharp reminder of the vital role the frontal lobe plays in our lives and is among the earliest examples of brain injury altering personality 
and behavior that have been documented. Story 10. Gaze Recognition Even if you are not the target of someone's stare, your brain can detect when someone is. Some people think that when we wake up unexpectedly in the middle of the night, especially between 2 and 3 in the morning, it's because a ghost is keeping an eye on us, even if this theory hasn't been scientifically proven. That is, after all, thought to be the most active period of spirit roving. According to some paranormal specialists, when we dream of seeing a stranger's face, the ghost is keeping an eye on us as we sleep. Intuitional Bias A psychological condition known as pareidolia causes us to perceive faces in seemingly insignificant items like food or clothes. Because the human brain is designed to recognize faces and because our minds are frequently deceiving, everyone experiences this phenomenon at some point. A scary movie or book might occasionally make you feel afraid and anxious, which can make you envision monsters or eerie faces in a pitch-black empty room. Story 11. Prolonged Stress Shrinks the Brain Stress has negative effects on the body, mind, and soul. Furthermore, persistent, ongoing stress actually causes the brain to shrink. Cortisol, a stress hormone, may shrink brain neurons and impair their ability to function. The hippocampal region of the brain, which creates new memories, is frequently smaller in people with PTSD and other unresolved trauma-related conditions. Significant life pressures may also cause the neurons in the prefrontal cortex to decrease. Here's further evidence, if you needed it, that stress management abilities are critical to maintaining the best possible health of your brain. Story 12. Cholesterol is necessary for the brain to exist. Although cholesterol has always been associated with undesirable things, the relationship between cholesterol and health has recently been under intense examination. We now know that cholesterol has a positive effect on the interaction between fat and the brain. Firstly, the brain uses up to 25% of total cholesterol in the body. Dr. David Perlmutter states that cholesterol supports membrane function, acts as an antioxidant, and serves as the raw material from which we are able to make things like progesterone, estrogen, cortisol, testosterone, and even vitamin D. Additionally, studies have shown that older persons with greater cholesterol levels performed better overall when it came to memory. A greater risk of depression was seen in those with reduced cholesterol. Death too. <laughs> Story 13. You can run a dim light bulb with your brain. In spite of all its amazing abilities, the brain uses relatively little energy. An ordinary brain might provide roughly 20 watts of power for a dim light bulb. According to one researcher, the energy consumed by the cortex is only enough to power 1% of its neurons at any time. Therefore, it might not be too harsh to call you a dim bulb if someone ever says it to you. It has to do with the total power our brains possess. Story 14. Pain is not sensible to the brain. That could be the pinnacle of irony. Pain is processed by the brain, which also serves as a warning system for us when something is wrong or when a certain bodily area needs more attention. However, because the brain lacks pain receptors, it is incapable of experiencing pain. And what about headaches? As anyone who experiences migraines will attest, we undoubtedly experience pain when we have a headache. In actuality, the layers of tissue that surround the brain and skull are the source of headache discomfort rather than the brain itself. Story 15. Up to age 25, the brain is not fully formed. The development of our brains continues even after we enter puberty or become 18. Even in our 20s, the brain is still evolving. This presents a number of fascinating questions regarding the definition of a mature brain and the biological accountability of younger individuals for immature or reckless behavior. According to Mental Health Daily, the fact that our brains aren't developed until the mid-twenties means that legal adults, those age 18 plus, are allowed to make adult decisions without fully mature brains. So how can one expect a brain that is devoid of fully developed reasoning and thought to behave in a fully developed manner. 
the answer to that query could have far-reaching effects on our society. Story 16. Sleeping too much will slow down your thinking. Lack of sleep is just as awful as getting too much of it. Numerous studies have shown that excessive sleep causes your brain to age more quickly because it is actively working harder when you are asleep. That being said, this does not imply that you should sleep as little as possible. The secret is to get the recommended six to eight hours of sleep each day. After too much sleep, we often feel jittery and foggy. This occurs when your mind becomes disoriented, acting as though it is inebriated or full, and leaving you in a state that is halfway between sleep and wakefulness. People who are sleep-deprived can pose a serious risk to others, as well as to themselves, particularly when driving. Story 17 Your brain is designed to produce hallucinations. If you believe that hallucinations are exclusively caused by drugs, you should reconsider. Numerous neurological disorders that cause synesthesia and hallucinations have been found. Psychedelic use just activates the pre-existing neural circuitry in our brains. The most frequent occurrence we encounter is hypnagogia. We experience hypnagogic hallucinations during a brief period of time when we are nodding off but not quite sleeping. In general, they are quite lucid and vivid. In a similar vein, hypnopompic hallucinations happen as we are barely conscious of our surroundings. I have successfully attempted lucid dreaming, and I firmly feel that hypnagogia serves as the entry point, with lucid dreams resembling an extended state of hypnagogia. Another inexplicable singularity in our brains that occurs during hallucinations is lucid dreaming. Additionally, it provides more evidence that inception is real. Sensory deprivation is another way your brain might create hallucinations. Researchers place their subjects in a space known as an anechoic room, which is dark and quiet. Hallucinations are clearly brought on by such an environment because it causes confusion in the mind and makes it feel compelled to create something to fill the emptiness. Both visual and auditory hallucinations result from this. Thus, my friends, Meditation is only a means by which we might first create the void and then relish the hallucinations that arise from it. Scientists at the Orfield Laboratory in Minnesota have created an anechoic room with a sound pressure level rating of 9.4 decibels. Often referred to as the quietest room on earth, no one has ever been able to avoid experiencing hallucinations here, where you can really hear your heart valves pumping blood or the sound your ear makes to fill the silence. It sounds terrifying, doesn't it? Story 18. Multiple sclerosis is a neurological disability in which your white blood cells define the coating on your nerves as enemies and begin to gnaw at them. It's like rats eating wiring, but with your body. Numb spots, perpetual tiredness, loss of vision, paralysis. This all depends on the severity, of course but still terrifying. You know what's worse? We're all equipped with it, literally all of us. That weird fuck-up is built into every brain, and it just so happens to trigger in certain people. The best theory we have about it is that it's connected to head trauma. You're literally one concussion away from losing control of your body forever. Story 19. Face blindness or prosopagnosia. People with this disease, as the informal name implies, have difficulty recognizing faces, sometimes even their own. It usually affects individuals from birth and never goes away. Individuals with the illness can acquire coping mechanisms to control it, such as learning the aspects of other people's faces from pictures or recalling their gait. That being said, there is no known cure for it. Unfortunately, prosopagnosia can cause social anxiety and self-isolation. When they opt to avoid social encounters because they are afraid they will be perceived as impolite or indifferent, they may fail to recognize someone they know well. Since up to 1 in 50 persons may suffer from the disorder in varied degrees, it's probable that you've encountered someone who does. One of them might be Brad Pitt, if you've ever met him. Despite never receiving a formal diagnosis, Pitt stated in a 2022 GQ interview that he believes he has the disease. Story 20. 
the true imposter syndrome, also known as Capgra syndrome. This isn't the one where you're in graduate school, waiting for everyone to realize you're not really intelligent, skilled, or committed enough to be there. Oh my. When someone has Capgra syndrome, they see a loved one not as the real person they know and love, but as a clone or other type of imposter. How upsetting would it be to enter your bedroom and discover someone who appeared exactly like your spouse, even though you knew it wasn't him? Given that it is in fact him, he would also likely be rather upset. Studying Capgras syndrome is challenging due to its rarity. The illness may be brought on by a disruption between the brain regions responsible for registering emotion and perceiving faces, according to experts. The reasoning behind this is that, regardless of how well you get along, you expect to feel something when you encounter a lady who resembles your mother. Your mind suggests she's a fraud when she doesn't elicit any reaction upon seeing her. Studies show that individuals with dementia, epilepsy, schizophrenia, bipolar illness, stroke, and traumatic brain injury are more likely to have Capgras syndrome. Story 21. Insomnia. Do you perceive colors in numbers? Or perhaps you experience sounds viscerally, feeling as though some irritate your throat or rumble in your gut. In that case, you may be a synesthete. Put simply, this is a state, not a disorder, when in response to activation of one sensory pathway, another unrelated sensory channel is stimulated. Numerous combinations of sensory inputs can lead to synesthesia in a variety of forms. Estimates range from 60 to 150. Synesthesia is biological, automatic, and apparently unlearned, distinct from both hallucination and metaphor, according to the American Psychological Association. Hence, whether they like it or not, a person who tastes beef whenever they see a triangle does not just choose to link that form with that taste. They may even get a flavor profile that makes them feel as though they are eating tenderloin. Sounds good if you enjoy meat. Studies indicate that 2-4% of people have synesthesia in one way or another, while opinions on the most common types vary. Story 22. Walking Corpse Syndrome also known as Cotard syndrome. This one is really horrifying and ghoulish, as the name suggests. Delusions that this uncommon illness causes range from the insistence that certain body parts are missing to the belief that the person is dead. In a case study that was published in Psychiatry, Edgemont, a woman who had complained to her family that she was dead, smelled like rotting flesh, and wanted to be taken to a morgue so that she could be with dead people, was admitted to a mental health facility. Cotard's syndrome is linked to underlying neurological disorders like epilepsy, dementia, and brain tumors, as well as psychiatric disorders like bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, and psychotic depression, while the exact etiology of the syndrome remains unknown. Story 23. Alien Hand Syndrome. While it sounds entertaining to watch, experiencing this one would be horrifying. Individuals suffering from this illness are unable to control one hand and are left to watch helplessly as the hand moves and acts as though it has its own will. Damage to the brain that impairs movement and control is the cause of alien hand syndrome. Although it is an extremely uncommon side effect of diseases such as brain tumors, strokes, or traumatic brain injury, about 30% of patients with corticobasal syndrome, a form of Parkinson's disease, may experience the syndrome. Your alien hand may exhibit one or more of the following actions, depending on the area of your brain where the damage occurred. 1. Unintentional touching, typically of your clothing and body parts. 2. Levitation, the spontaneous raising of your arm in the air. 3. Waving or other meaningless gestures. 4. Removing tasks that your other hand has finished. Unfastening buttons that your five other hand has just secured, for example. 6. There are no known direct therapies for the disease, which can last anywhere 7 from 30 minutes to the remainder of your life. Creative problem solving, though, might aid in coping. In public, some people choose to reduce their shame by sitting on their alien hand.
Some people take steps to prevent their wandering hands from touching them or causing them any trouble, such as wearing oven mitts. Story 24. Compulsive Obsessive Disorder. Cluster C of the DSM-5's personality disorders includes obsessive compulsive personality disorder. It is characterized as a persistent pursuit of order, perfectionism, and a pervasive need for mental and interpersonal control. Do you know someone who is so focused on excellence? They prioritize work over social interactions because they are so focused on finishing the task at hand. The patient's day is so filled with a repeating ritual that it is impossible for them to follow a regular schedule. Common signs of OCD. This disorder is characterized by an obsessive need to clean, rearrange, rearrange, and make sure everything is in order. Significant distress results from resisting their compulsions. Story 25. Histrionic personality disorder is found in the personality disorder category of DSM-5 list of diagnoses. Patients with this personality disorder usually present dramatic and erratic behavior to gain attention. These people are self-centered and pay too much attention to their physical appearance. Their mental image of themselves is distorted. They gain their self-esteem from the approval of others. Though normal functioning in society is not affected by this type of disorder, but sometimes the manipulative skills of these persons with histrionic personality disorder can affect interpersonal relationships. Common signs of HPD. People who are overly sensitive to disapproval and criticisms acts dramatically in front of a crowd, but with lacking sincerity, exhibits inappropriate flirtatious behavior, self-centered, and does not care about others. Story 26. Auto-cannibalism. We are now entering the strange realm of mental illnesses. The DSM-5 does not classify auto-cannibalism as a diagnosable mental health condition. It's a mental disease that horror films frequently depict. However, it is a real thing. Often referred to as self-cannibalism, this uncommon mental illness is characterized by the sufferer eating various portions of themselves. Strange? Wait till you find out that some people have a habit of exhibiting some of the signs of this condition. You read correctly. Auto-cannibalism includes biting your nails and nibbling on your fingernails dead skin. A person suffering from an extreme form of this disorder may eat their own skin scabs, hair, boogers, excrement, and bodily discharges. It concerns impulse control and is connected to anxiety and despair, just as OCD. For this type of condition, aversion therapy combined with cognitive behavioral therapy can be helpful.